Good morning, everyone. This is Mike O'Malley here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion recorded on June 17th, 2023, recorded on 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot of things to talk about today, including Invest Area 92L that has formed in the Atlantic Basin. Is a hurricane threat shaping up? So let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a look across the tropical Atlantic this morning, we noticed that it is relatively quiet in terms of there is no active systems currently. However, we are watching Invest Area 92L, which is now located down here where my cursor is. This is to the south and a little bit slightly to the southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands at this point, which is right about up here. And this storm system will begin to slowly move off towards the west and eventually the west-northwest over the coming days, as it could get pretty close here to the Antilles, which we'll be talking about here in greater detail in just a moment. Taking a look at the tropical weather outlook that was issued this morning as of 8 a.m., so just about an hour and a half ago, Invest Area 92L now is up to a 70% chance of tropical cyclone formation over the next seven days. Again, as the system slowly moves off towards the west-northwest, and is unlikely to gain much intensity, at least in the very short term. This probably will become a tropical depression or storm sometime by early next week. And then this could get very close to the Lesser Antilles here within about a week's time or so. Again, don't focus so much on the fact that this shows it curving up. We're going to talk about all the possible track solutions here in just a moment. And in the Eastern Pacific Basin, we are still monitoring a system 30% chance of development. Won't be talking about this system because this is no threat to land. So today we're exclusively focusing on Invest 92L. So taking a look here at the satellite imagery for Invest Area 92L, this is our system right here where my cursor is. And we notice that it is rather convectively anemic as we have started the morning. And this is pretty common for tropical waves that first emerge off the coast of Africa. And this looks fairly healthy, even for what I would say late season standards. This, this is a rather healthy look to a tropical wave. We notice that it is sort of kind of enveloped within a little bit of a drier environment. Some of this drier, more stable air is trying to get wrapped into the circulation from time to time. But overall, we notice a nice mid-level vortex here, nice mid-level spin in the atmosphere. And there is some associated convection with this system today. And over time, as this convection continues to blossom closer and closer towards this mid-level vortex, this will actually not only help to protect the system against any dry air intrusions, but will also help to convert that mid-level spin down into the lower levels, which is required for this then to be classifiable as a tropical cyclone. So you can see... It is sitting out here in the intertropical convergence zone, and we notice that the environment ahead of it is somewhat dry because there's all of these more so stratocumulus clouds out here. But overall, this is in a fairly good environment and will remain in a good environment, especially as it traverses westward and, in, and really encounters the increasing sea surface temperatures out there. So what we're looking at here, this is the GFS 850 millibar vorticity or the spin in the atmosphere at roughly 5,000 feet off the ground. And we're also looking at the 10 meter winds, which is all these little wind barbs in here that you see. So this is our circulation right now in the mid levels. This is not a low level vortex. And we notice that there's a lot of different competing areas to watch over the next several days. This tropical system then kind of merges with remnant areas of vorticity on the eastern side of this monsoon trough, and it kind of gets slingshot around, but eventually this consolidates here within roughly about two days, and we're well on the way to tropical cyclone genesis at this given point in time. And on the forecast guidance, this continues to intensify into a tropical storm, and even in some of the recent GFS and even the European solutions, this has actually developed a hurricane in the forecast model within just about five days or so as the system moves off towards the west-northwest here. Now, generally, this would be very unusual, rare, and I wouldn't be calling for this, but the circumstances seem to point that this system is going to be one that is going to 
really kind of set the boundaries in terms of history because this is very unprecedented and it's happened before, just very rare. And so within about five days, the system is knocking within several hundred miles of the Lesser Antilles at this point. And at this intensity, there's a lot of things that could happen. So let's go ahead and look at some of the things that are going to be governing both intensity and the track. So what we're looking at now is the mid-level relative humidity, basically just a measure of how dry or moist the atmosphere is through kind of the middle depth of the column here. So all of this brown in here, this indicates dry, stable air, and all of this green indicates where the moisture is currently present. And we notice that this is starting off today at 2 p.m. and our tropical wave is sitting roughly within a fairly favorable moisture environment. Take a look at a area averaged sounding for this area underneath where this tropical uh, system is right now. We notice that it is relatively moist throughout an entire depth of the column. The only thing that does have me a little bit concerned for the initial organization of the system would be some of this drier air up here, kind of through the, in, the depth of about 600, through about 300 millibars in the atmosphere, roughly kind of the mid to upper troposphere here. There is some drier air. Now it doesn't look overly dry, but you're dealing with already fairly low uh, mixing ratio values at colder temperatures. And what this essentially tells me, and what I'll share with you guys here, is that as you start to get these convection, you know, the deep convection to go up, you start to get convective downdrafts, which can bring down some of this drier and more stable air down to the surface, which means now that the underlying ocean has to rewarm and remoisten the boundary layer here to allow convection to freely rise and for this process to start over and to make the system more resilient to these dry air intrusions and convective downdrafts. This is a very typical process in tropical cyclone genesis and formation. So this obviously is not something, you know, like brand new or, or is a significant detriment, but it is going to be a problem and it is going to slow down the genesis rate, at least initially throughout the next day or two. And I think some of the forecast guidance has continued to latch on to the idea of a little bit slower formation, which is going to be some bad news for the islands. We'll talk about that here in just a second. We'll continue to run this forward here on the GFS forecast. And within several days from now, this is by uh, late Monday evening at 8 p.m., we have a tropical cyclone that is well on its way to becoming our next name storm, which is Brett with one T, not two. I made that mistake yesterday. Uh, but generally speaking, it is sitting in a relatively moist atmosphere at this time. And if we look at a vorte uh, kind of a vortex area sounding, averaged sounding through 54 hours, so this would be on June 19th here in just a couple of days, we notice that the environment is more conducive to tropical cyclone formation and its uh, genesis and maintenance with the fact that there is not going to be a lot of dry air in the mid levels here we notice that we've completely or almost completely wiped out that dry stable air and we've actually moistened the boundary layer aloft and aloft fairly significantly compared to what it was last time so the red and green values here the, the lines are closer together the red of course is temperature green is dew point temperature and when these are pretty close together that means it's fairly saturated so that's when your latent heat release is more potent and that's when you're dealing with a system that is starting to become more resilient to convective downdraft problems. So this is a signal, at least on most of the models, that Genesis is going to occur sometime within probably the next 60, or within the next about 50 to 70 hours from now is when we're going to seemingly have tropical cyclone Genesis. Now, on this forecast model, because the system becomes fairly strong quite quickly, we notice that within just a few days out to about seven days, this actually pulls well to the north of the islands. And this is going to be now a segue into how the intensity plays a role in the track forecast. So now taking a look here at the GFS, and we're looking at the GFS ensemble forecast tracks for Invest Area 92L. 
So we notice that the majority of the tracks are relatively confined throughout the next several days. They're in a pretty good agreement that this system will continue to track generally off towards the west through the next several days. However, after that is when things begin to significantly diverge. You notice that on the deterministic GFS, which is the red line here, this begins to curve more towards the northwest and eventually straight north as it interacts with a developing uh, kind of area of low pressure closer towards Bermuda that eventually slingshots this system further towards the north combined with a mid-level weakness in the ridge because there's a trough sitting over kind of the open ocean here. So the GFS does that and the GFS ensembles say no. And the GFS ensembles, in fact, have a track density that is much closer towards the Lesser Antilles throughout the next several days. And in fact, the mean, which is the black line here, the mean of the GFS ensemble tracks have this basically approaching the island chain within about the next about five to seven days, probably about the next six or seven days, really. Um, and this could get uncomfortably close to some of the island chains here even potentially making its way into the Caribbean. If we take a look here at the ensemble uh, member minimum mean sea level pressure, this gives us an indication of all the potential intensity tracks here. And we notice that at least on the GFS, it is sort of latching onto the idea of generally a stronger system will get further north, at least in the short term. But it is at least somewhat interesting that it does have stronger members that make it further west. And this is a very distinct possibility if our storm does not get strong somewhere out here. And in fact, maybe waits to about 50 or 55 west here. That may not be enough real estate to turn the storm further north. And it is certainly possible, but at least at this point there seems to be a somewhat greater threat for some type of tropical system to make its way into this area. This is the model track forecast for Invest Area 92L, and I'm going to use this as a word of caution. These tracks are highly subjective to change. We don't have a true low-level circulation. Once we do, it will be much easier to track this system and tell where it's going to be going five, six, seven days from now. But we're looking at this as a pre-genesis tropical wave. It's very hard and this forecast is going to change. And I want to emphasize that a lot because this is not set in stone. It's highly subjective to change. But irregardless, the model tracks for the 12Z cycle have generally been in agreement with the GFS ensembles and the majority of the other uh, members as well from other models generally indicates that the GFS is going to be the furthest right outlier at this point. And most of the models are kind of generally aiming this at somewhere closer towards the lesser Antilles and even the greater Antilles out here within about the next five to six or seven days. So there is going to be a lot to kind of watch here. Again, not a high threat to the island chain right now. Generally, I would assume, and this is just based on what I am looking at right now, but I do go to say that the greatest threat is going to be north of Barbados. I don't think this sneaks any further south to near Trinidad and Tobago. So I think all is going to be clear, but it is still worth monitoring this system as we are still several days away and things can change. So the bottom line, what we're looking at right now, there's kind of three potential tropical cyclone tracks that we're looking at right now. Uh, these tracks here range from green, yellow, and red. Green indicating no threat to land. Yellow is a somewhat greater threat to land. And the red means that there's a high threat to land. So the overall subnoptic setup is going to be one that is characterized by an upper level ridge over the United States with a trough that is going to be digging down across the middle Atlantic. And what this is going to mean is is a tropical cyclone in this area that gets strong is likely to feel this trough and capture it out to sea and this would be one of the more plausible solutions that was forecasted by the gfs uh, even going back to the latest deterministic run but there is more members today coming into agreement that this doesn't become strong as quickly and may in fact take one of these two other tracks here 
more than likely I am leaning towards this yellow track here that does end up capturing some impacts to the islands before turning out to sea here, turning between, kind of turning generally on a track that would take it a pretty near to Bermuda, but that's in the very long range. But generally speaking, I am more in agreement today with this yellow track that would indicate some potential threat to the islands as it progresses throughout the next several days. Again, this forecast is highly subject to change, and the confidence level right now is a very low confidence forecast, but we are gaining confidence as we progress day by day and see where the system ends up. So uh, we'll be talking about this system later today or later this evening as well. It is also worth noting that today there is a severe weather threat from really Colorado all the way through Florida with a threat for damaging winds, large hail, and tornadoes. This area uh, generally from the kind of the Midwest areas, the tornado alley areas, all the way down into Alabama and even parts of Florida have just been absolutely raked with some destructive weather over the last couple of days. So our thoughts and prayers go out to them. And of course, we'll be keeping on tabs of everything, especially with Invest 92L. And we'll have another video discussion that will be posted later this evening, roughly around 7.30 or 8 p.m. going over all of the latest information there. All right. So that being said, have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. God bless. Take care. Of course, I am Michael O'Malley. I'll talk to you guys again some more later this evening.